when you're creating your comic in Photoshop, invariably you're going to have potentially hundreds of layers over here in the layers palette. You can organize these really effectively in a couple of ways. First of all, you need to name your layers. For instance, I'm going to click on this, double click on this, and call it, we'll call it panel 2, just for argument's sake. And I could name this one here panel 3. Now, another way to, um, once, you, once you start getting images and speech bubbles in here, it's going to get really, really chaotic. And at the bottom of the layers palette, there's a button um, which allows you to create a new group. Now, just think of this as a folder um, for organizing documents. In this case, you're organizing layers. And what I'm going to do is take panel 2 and drop it into this group. I'll actually put panel 3 in there as well. I'm going to rename it panel 2 and 3 just by double-clicking on the panel 2 and 3 just by double clicking on the title there and of course the advantage is once you've put all of your images and all of your speech bubbles and all of your panels into a group like this you can just close it and open it again at any time and it, it, it makes it really um, easy to organize your document of course when you have everything organized in a group like this it's also possible to simply select that group and move everything inside that group around on the canvas. So if you're going to be creating a comic with heaps and heaps of images, heaps of panels, heaps of um, speech bubbles and all of these things, you really need to organize um, your layers into groups. Now for this part of the tutorial I'm going to create a basic um, speech bubble using the vector tools in Photoshop. Uh, first up I'm going to select the text tool um, from my toolbox. I'm going to head up here to the options bar and the font I'm using is called letter -matic. It's from a uh, site called blambot.com. It's a free font. There are a whole range of free fonts as well as some uh, really nice pay fonts that you can get from that site. I've set the um, size of the text to seven points which is appropriate um, for the resolution of my document and the size of the panel that I'm working with. First up, um, if I go down to the layers palette, you'll notice that I have the vector mask of my panel selected. And when I go to create a text box, Photoshop actually becomes quite excited and thinks that I want to put my text inside this vector object. And you'll notice that uh, there is a small um, circle around the text tool. If I hold down the shift key, it will enable me to um, drag a text box independent um, of this vector mask. So what I'm going to do is just create an object here and I'm going to type in some text. Uh, I have no idea what an ion capacitor is and it definitely doesn't really have a place in um, noir fiction but you know it's my standard dummy text for doing this sort of thing. Okay and I'm going to hit enter now. Alright I've got some text here that I can move around on my canvas the next thing I'm going to do is uh, go down here to the toolbox where I select uh, the ellipse tool. Now what I'm going to do is um, use the ellipse tool to draw an ellipse a little bit larger than my text here. Now of course um, it's filled my ellipse with black. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, drop down to the layers palette here and double click on the color slider in the layers palette next to that vector mask. I'm going to change the fill color to white. Now you notice of course that I can't see my text because if you look at the layers palette the uh, vector mask is actually on top of that so I'm just going to drag it underneath. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did earlier with um, my panels. I'm going to create a couple of um, layer styles here. First of all, I'm going to go to the Add a Layer Style button. Holding it down, I'm going to select Stroke. Now, by default, um, it set the color of that stroke to red. Um, I'm going to change it to black. And I, I think a three pixel um, stroke around that um, balloon is acceptable, so I'll keep that. The other thing I'm going to do here is add a drop shadow um, to that, and that can be done really easily. It lifts it off the page a little bit, and it looks kind of nice. Uh, what I'm going to do is 
uh, just deselect that layer for a second so you can see how, how good that bubble looks and move it to an appropriate, move the text to a, an appropriate place. Now of course I can um, transform this at any time by selecting the layer mask, going to the edit menu and choosing free transform path. And if I want to, I can make it just a little bit um, narrower. Okay, now the next um, part of this um, creating the speech bubble is a little bit tricky. You need to grab the pen tool, um, which sits down here with all the uh, vector tools in Photoshop. You can get to it very, very easily by pushing the P key on your keyboard. I'm going to grab that, go up to the options bar, and there's a button here which allows us to add to the area um, that we've just drawn. So add to the shape area, and I want to click that. If I move down to the um, ellipse that I've created now, I'm going to draw three points just by clicking uh, with the pen tool. I'm going to click here, I'm going to click out here, and back in the ellipse again. And I might actually just close that off. What you'll notice when I um, deselect this particular layer now is that I've got a pretty um, funky looking speech bubble. And that technique can be used to create speech bubbles. Um, you can use a similar technique to create thought bubbles, um, or you could even create, um, you know, bubbles which really emphasize speech. You know the ones I'm talking about, the ones with the spiky edges. Now, it's a good idea, um, once you've created the text and you've created your balloon, I could work on that a little bit more. It's actually looking a little bit ugly, not quite the right um, size, but I can always resize it. What I'm going to do is go down to the Layers palette here, hold down the Shift key, and select both of those layers. Right clicking on them, I'm going to link them together using the contextual menu that comes up. Now, whenever I move one of these layers, the other layer is going to move with it. 